Hi friends, welcome back to English with Kayla. In today's English lesson, I will be doing some art with you. And at the same time, I'll be teaching you some really important phrasal verbs that will help you speak about art, making things, and just in your everyday English life. So make sure to watch all the way to the end. Let's get started. So first, if you're an artist, you might already know this. You might be a painter, or if you make things out of clay, you might be a sculptor. I don't have any actual artist clay, but I do have Silly Putty, which is quite satisfying to play with. And right now I'm actually just stretching it out. And now I will roll it up into a ball. So roll it up means you're making it into a ball, or you can roll paper in a circle as well. And I like to try to smooth out the Silly Putty. So I have Silly Putty. I also have Slime, which is not necessarily an artist's tool, but it is pretty fun to play with as well. So as you can see, it's really stretchy. It's really slimy. Ugh, I gotta get that off my fingers. So now that we've talked a little bit, just a little bit about sculpting, let's move on to painting. Now, I'm going to paint a picture for you guys today. And I have children's art supplies. So we're just gonna do the best that we can. This is not going to exactly be a masterpiece. A masterpiece is a beautiful, grand work of art. So first, I'm just going to dump out the paint onto my paper plate here. So dump out, and sometimes you will squeeze out a tube of paint, but this comes in a little plastic container, so I literally have to dump out the paint. And I'm going to dump out some white paint. I feel like white paint is very useful for when you are making a picture. You can lighten up a color with white paint. So when you lighten up something, you make it a lighter shade. So I'm gonna mix the purple and the white together. I'm gonna mix them up. So you can either say, I'm going to mix them together if you're talking about two colors or if you're talking about more than two colors, you can say I'm going to mix them up. And this is also really useful when you're cooking too. You're, you're mixing up ingredients. Let's dump out some green for our picture as well. All right, this is called a roll and I can roll it out so roll out, and then I can either rip it off, or sometimes we say tear it off. But today, I'm actually just going to use scissors and cut it off, so here we go. Now that I have cut off the paper, I have to hang it up on my easel. This is an easel. An easel is the surface that artists can put whatever they're painting on so that they can paint on it straight up and down. Keep in mind that hang, to hang up a piece of paper, isn't a regular verb. So you say in the past tense, I hung up the paper. All right, so now that I have our paper hung up, I have to try to smooth it out or flatten it out. And let's see, I have purple and I have green, so let's try to paint some grapes today. I feel like this is gonna turn out bad. It could be abstract art. Abstract art is something that's not meant to be a picture of something in real life, or it's not meant to look like the object in real life. So actually, I'm gonna use my pencil first and I'm going to sketch out my picture. When you sketch something, it means you're making a rough drawing of what it should look like. 
So it won't be what your final drawing looks like. It's just to sketch out a place where you're going to be painting. So we're making some briefs. Sometimes when people paint, they have a model that they're looking at. And the model is just like the real object that they can try to make their picture look like. But right now I'm just going off memory. This term off memory means I'm just going off what I think it looks like in my head, what I remember it looking like. So actually, I'm going to dip my paintbrush in. Dip in is the phrasal verb here. And I'm just going to get after it. When you say it, you're going to get after it, it just means you're going to start right away. I'm gonna start by painting my circles. And actually, I'm going to stop real quick and I'm going to add on to my sketch here because I think what would look nice on the grapes is some leaves. Whew, that's pretty bad. Okay. I'm gonna continue to paint, paint, paint. And I'm going to use my white to lighten up some of the grapes here. So when you lighten something up, you actually add more white to it. You make it less dark. So the phrase is lighten up. And actually if someone is sad or angry, you can tell them to lighten up. This means lighten up your mood, be a little bit happier. Um, one thing that you can do in art is you can soften up a line or you can soften up a color. And this is similar to lightening it up when you're just making the line less harsh and less dark. Sometimes we describe people's personalities as either soft or hard. And if someone has like a very hard personality or a hard demeanor, it means that they're like not easy to make smile, they might be kind of mean, they might be very strict with their children. Okay, so I'm going to cover up these last two grapes. When you cover something up, it means you hide it, or in this case you paint over it, paint over. So you're hiding it with the color kind of, and then I'm gonna lighten up this last one here. All right, voila. This means like, here you go, here's this masterpiece. And that's definitely a French word. We use it in English though, to just mean like, here you go. And I'm going to put away this paintbrush, I have paint on my hand. And I'm going to get out, get out this paintbrush. It's a clean one. And this green is not super realistic, but we're just gonna go with it. When you say, let's just go with it, it typically means it's not perfect, but it will work. Another phrase that you could use in art or just with any project really, or even English is, Let's just make it work. So that means even though it's not perfect, it, it's not exactly what you need, you're just going to make it work. All right, so here's my grape so far. I think that I wanna do kind of a background. It might not be realistic. Again, it might be more abstract, but um, let's try our blue. I'm gonna open it up. And I'm just going to wipe off my purple brush. I'm gonna get my blue brush here and we're gonna make it kind of like a sky. Maybe it will resemble a sky with the blue and the white. 
if something resembles something, ooh, we're getting some purple. If it resembles something, it means it sort of looks like it. Um, sometimes we say you resemble your mother or you resemble your father. This means that you kind of look like them. You kind of remind me of them. Another phrase I'll teach you like that is if you look exactly like your mother or you're exactly like your father, sometimes we say that you're a spitting image. Okay, I think that this looks like a really nice like, sunset sky. It wasn't what I was going for, but again, we're just making it work. And that phrase, it wasn't what we're going for, means it wasn't what I was thinking of doing originally. I didn't mean to do it, but we, it, it's working out. I wasn't going for it, but I think it looks nice. If someone says, do you want me to paint you a nice picture? And you can say, yeah, um, could you paint me a picture that I can hang up in my room? And they paint you a really strange picture of grapes. You could say, that wasn't what I'm, I was going for. Um, I might not hang it up in my room. <laughs> Just thinking out loud here. So if you're like me when you do art or when you do household chores, you might think out loud. And this phrase just means that you're saying your thoughts out loud. We say that, sometimes we say, I'm just talking to myself. Or sometimes we say, I'm thinking out loud. There is an idiom that less is more. And I say this a lot. I, I kind of believe that this applies to many things. If you say less is more, it means the less things that you do to try to be perfect, the more often you make mistakes. So if you do less, it will turn out better. It will, it will be like you did more, but not really. So I'm going to not try to make too many mistakes on this because I think it's decent. I think it's okay. I had pretty low expectations, which means I had not a very, um, I didn't think I would do very good on this painting when I started, when I had this idea to do for an English lesson. I had pretty low expectations, so this is turning out a little better than I thought. Okay, so I'm definitely no Picasso. The more I look at this, this the stranger it looks. And if you say like, I'm no Picasso or I'm no artist, it's just kind of a way that you're, you know, being actually modest and like making sure that someone doesn't assume that your abilities are higher than they are. So if you wanted to say that you weren't a very good soccer player, you could say, I I'm no Ronaldo, trust me. This means I'm not very experienced in soccer. And sometimes you can mean that you actually are very bad at soccer, but sometimes if you say I'm no Ronaldo, it means that you're good, but you're not that good. All right, so here it is. Here is my work of art for the English with Kayla channel. I'll give you guys a closer look in just a second here. Let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to be harsh which means you can be kind of mean about my art today. Or you can sugarcoat it, which means that even though it's bad, you'll say nice words about it. You'll say, oh, you could, you could maybe improve a little bit. That's to sugarcoat, to make it sound like I didn't do that bad, but really, I didn't do that well. And maybe give me a score, one being the worst, 10 being the best in the comments. I can't wait to see what you guys thought about this lesson. It's a little bit different than what I normally do. If you're looking for more art vocabulary, I have a really old art vocabulary lesson. It's way different than this one, but it's useful as well. Go ahead and watch that. And make sure you guys subscribe to English with Kayla so that I can teach you English every week with two new English lessons. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.